This is Cassidy Kuchenbecker with Environmental Initiatives. Thank you for watching our presentation on detecting and removing white mold. White mold is frequently overlooked. If you are a project manager or an estimator at a remediation company, you are leaving money on the table on many projects because you're missing the white mold. If you're a consultant and you're trying to figure out why your clients are getting sick, you are frequently missing areas of allergens that could be impacting air quality. White mold is difficult to see, and in this video we're gonna talk about uh, where we find it, how to find it, and stick around for the end of the video where I tell you very specifically areas that are frequently overlooked. For those of you who don't know who we are, Environmental Initiatives is an indoor environmental testing company. We assess buildings for water damage, moisture, air quality, odors, asbestos. We use microscopes and other tools on site to instantly analyze samples and tell you exactly where these contaminants are in real time so you know quickly what you need to do to address the situation. Myself, I've been doing this work since 2003. My bachelor's and master's degree are in microbiology, immunology, and chemistry. So I study people and buildings and how they react to buildings. During this presentation, we're going to be talking about why we even care about white mold. We don't hear about white mold, right? Usually people talk about black mold. Then we're going to talk about flashlight techniques, better ways of detecting this mold. And then we'll discuss at the end of the presentation commonly missed areas of white mold. These are the locations that you're missing during your assessments. If you have any questions, you can phone call me or email me based on my contact information at the end of the presentation. Now this presentation also has a worksheet and quiz. If you haven't already printed it out, I strongly suggest you press pause and go to our website or our blog site at microscopicminute.com, microscopicminute.com, and go on under the presentation tab. So black mold must be worse, right? I mean, that's what we always hear about in the newspapers and on websites, black mold, toxic mold. You might be surprised to find out, however, that dark colored molds in our experience are actually less interesting than the light colored molds when it comes to health. So where did the term black mold come from? Back in 1994, there was a single CDC researcher with a single project where they were looking at the bleeding lungs of multiple infants in Cleveland. They, she determined or believed to have determined that the issue was the result of being exposed to a black colored mold called Stachybotrys in the houses. Stachybotrys, like many molds, produce various mycotoxins, which are chemicals that are used as biological agents to fight off other molds or bacteria or give the mold some other uh, advantage in the environment. So she believed that it was an inhalation of this mycotoxin from Stachybotrys that was causing the bleeding lungs. However, the uh, media loved the story, and they created the terms black mold and toxic mold. We in the industry hate those terms because they are misleading, but they were also created by an outside entity, the media. However, in 1999, the CDC retracted their report. They found that their science was lacking, and uh, they realized that the stachybotrys had nothing to do with the bleeding lungs as far as they could tell. But did the media take back their portrayal of black mold? No. So we're still dealing with those terms, and we're still dealing with people incorrectly thinking that stachybotrys and other black colored molds are somehow inherently worse than other molds. So the research never did support this, even in the last couple of decades. We do know that mold matters, and some molds affect some people, but it's not really the mold. It's the person and the amount of mold sometimes, and other things in water-damaged buildings that matter. So when we compare light-colored molds and dark-colored molds in health, 
It is our experience that people react more to light colored molds. Or if they're going to report health symptoms from exposure to a moldy building, we're most often finding exposures to white color or light colored molds. So why is this? Is there an apparent difference in how much people react to the light versus dark molds? Maybe. And if there is, well, here's my thoughts as to why. Dark colored molds being pigmented, they uh, resist the UV light better. And outside, we get exposed to far more dark colored molds than we do white or light colored molds. But inside, uh, with the lack of UV inside a house, these light colored molds can dominate. These molds that we've never been exposed to before until our modern housing. Which might be, whether you believe in evolution or creationism, uh, basically our bodies just aren't used to or aren't made for the types of molds that we used to always be exposed to. And maybe that's why there's this apparent difference in level of health impact. In addition, you will get more release of mold spores from light colored molds than dark molds usually uh, until you start to you know, disturb the materials, then you get all sorts of moldy debris releasing from everything. But if the mold's growing and you simply have normal airflow over it, light colored molds result in a lot more release of debris into the air. Also, light colored molds are, or I should say most of the opportunistic pathogen molds, the molds that will uh, grow and infect people who have lowered immune systems, most of those are light colored versus dark colored, so we care more for that reason as well. Now, these light colored molds, I told you that they release far more spores, and it's because per square inch, light colored molds in general per square inch have tons more mold spores uh, that will want to release from airflow. Uh, here's a light colored mold on the left, aspergillus. You can see all those little white dots. Those are all spores. And they're far smaller than the brown mold spores from catomium, the mold catomium, which is on the right. So you simply have a lot more spores that want to release per square inch on a surface for light colored molds. All right, so white and tan mold hidden in plain sight. What are you missing and what, uh, how can we better detect these areas of growth? So first off, dark colored molds, easy to find, right? You walk around, you can see them. But the problem with white, green, and tan molds is that they often, um, or they're often camouflaged. They look very much like the surface that they're on or they're simply too light to discern with your eyes in either way. Here's an example of a situation. It's a cottage up in Door County. Uh, a restoration company came through because it smelled very musty in this cottage for multiple years, and the uh, estimator found nothing, and I don't blame him for not finding anything. The homeowner, too, has been living here uh, seasonally for many years, never saw where the mold was. We walked through and we used uh, the flashlight a little bit differently, and what we found was white colored mold everywhere on all of the wood surfaces, on all of the logs, in every single room. So how did we see the mold when other people missed it? Well, it's how we use our flashlight. When you're going to be shining a flashlight on a wall or on a surface like the legs of a table, don't shine it directly at the surface. So don't shine it perpendicular to the surface. Instead, run the light across the surface. Uh, so you run the light parallel with the surface. When you run the light parallel with the surface, the mold uh, easily pops uh, visually. Here's a fantastic picture showing the difference between the light hitting going down the wall. On the left, you see all the white mold popping and where the light is simply hitting the wall on the right hand side of this picture where you don't see that white mold on the wood. Here's another picture from that same cabin that we showed a couple pictures before where there's white colored mold on pretty much all of the furniture, all the additional surfaces, and it was simply overlooked because the flashlight wasn't used properly in that space. That was a situation where the remediation contractor could have had a five-figure uh, restoration project that someone else instead got because they missed the mold during their estimation. All right, here's a surface, here's a situation that's a little less obvious, uh, but it's still very common. So we see the white colored mold on the 
exterior of the kitchen cabinetry. When we look inside the cabinetry, we see it inside there too. Now, if you were looking at this white mold inside kitchen cabinetry, you might think it was simply a chemical residue, or maybe it was just some mold growing because of uh, moisture inside the cabinet, which is fine. But if you see the, see the whiteness on the outside of the cabinet, you instantly start to think, oh, there might be mold in far more areas of this house because of moisture condensing on cool surfaces. Here's further inside the cabinet. You can see the white colored mold growing on the bottom of the shelf. By the way, another great little tip is when you do look in, inside kitchen cabinetry, look at the pots and pans for white and yellow mold growth. You can have mold growing on the grease on the pots and pans and that will indicate a moisture problem in general. Always look at doors, right? Mold will grow on the lower portions of the doors. Now in this situation, what happened was somebody had cleaned the surface, but they never cleaned the mold from the uh, little indentations of the, of the door surface. So when you look at a door and you see this, it's not grime, it is actually mold growing. When you look inside um, closets, right? Closets are often cool, and the coolness of the closet will cause more mold to condense. When I first looked at this house, I completely missed the fact that there was mold growing, this yellowish mold, on the walls of the closet because my flashlight wasn't bright enough. I went around later after I put more batteries in my flashlight, realized I missed a lot. So always make sure your flashlight has bright, fresh batteries. Here's a close-up of that closet wall. Uh, whenever you see speckling on cool walls, usually closets, uh, always assume that it's mold growth. Now what about basements? I want to say something about white mold in basements. First off, when you see white colored mold growing on the floor joists, like we do here, but not on the subfloor, that mold almost always grew because of water on, standing on the concrete floor of the basement. So it's standing on the floor, so flooding, a pipe release, or something like that. When you see white colored mold not on the floor joists, but instead on the contents like um, uh, furniture or luggage, white colored mold on the, on the contents but not the floor joists almost always indicates uh, elevated humidity in general because they weren't dehumidifying usually in summertime. Now when you see dark colored molds or light colored molds on the floor joists and the subfloor, the floor joists and the subfloor, that could be from flooding, but it's also often from mold that grew on that wood during construction when the subfloor was very cold because it wasn't you know, heated you know, in, the, in the late summer or maybe uh, springtime. And so it was still cold on the first floor, condensing on the bottom of the subfloor. All right, now we're gonna talk the last thing regarding white colored mold, and that's in attics. Now in attics, it's really easy to see dark colored molds. Dark colored mold in attics is a result of long-term, so multiple winters, long-term, modest amounts of moisture. So humidity enters the attic, condenses on the cold roof decking, causing the dark mold to grow over a couple of years. But white mold is often overlooked. Black mold is easy to see in attics, white mold is not. In this case, uh, dark colored molds grew first, but light colored molds grew later on over the dark colored mold. But it's hard to see, isn't it? Light colored molds are easier to see when the mold starts to grow down the uh, rafters. So we need to be very careful when you're assessing attics to make sure you're not missing white colored mold. White colored mold in attics means that there's a lot more condensation and they grow very quickly. You can have just a couple square feet of white colored mold turn into a whole attic if the moisture, you know, within just a few days or a few weeks if, if there's a new humidity source in the house that's causing this to grow. So white colored molds always mean more moisture and sometimes that can also mean uh, rapid expansion. All right, where are people missing these white molds? First, always look at the bottom of the lower shelves and basements. So if you're in a basement looking for water damage or moisture, get on your knees, look at the bottom of the lower shelves. Uh, mold will often grow on the bottom. Look at pool sticks, doorknobs, anything that's greasy, right? 
the mold will grow on the hand grease and so you'll see it uh, like up and down the pool cues. Always look at the lower two feet of furniture and luggage in basements. So get again, get on your knees, look at the bottom of the of the couches, flip up the fabric at the bottom of the couches, look at the lower legs of the chairs. Shoes and closets, first floor closets, basement closets. You know, we're looking at well, primarily first floor closets where they're cold. Open up the open up the closet doors, move the furn move the uh, clothes away from the exterior wall. Look at the shoes that have a lot of grime on them. They'll support the mold growth. Uh, also, look at the back sides and the lower sides of beds and dressers. Anything where you have furniture up against cold exterior walls, you can have mold growing on the back sides of the furniture, often overlooked. And also look inside kitchen, bathroom cabinetry, anywhere where there can be a lot, there can be more moisture condensing inside those uh, cabinetry, which can sometimes be cool because there's uh, plumbing, because there's exterior walls. And of course, like we said before, always look at the bottom sides of the doors, specifically the back of the door uh, facing the inside of like closet. Closets will often be where you see the white colored mold at the bottom of the doors. All right, thank you for joining us for this presentation. Again, if you haven't looked at the quiz, go to microscopicminute.com, download the quiz. It helps you follow along. If you have any questions, please email or call me and uh, watch this video one more time in a couple of weeks because it's very important as a consultant, as a contractor, that we are not missing these white colored molds and that we're adequately removing the contaminants to help our clients.